You're listening to Tom O'Connor from NLPTimes.com. In this short video, I'm going to look at uh, Tony Robbins, international motivation speaker, personal development guru, an all-around great kind of guy. Um, personally, I'm a big fan of Tony's stuff, and in this video, uh, which probably be actually a series of videos, I'm just going to look at Tony uh, presenting, specifically his UPW uh, event. This particular event that we're about to watch is Tony speaking at um, probably a free guest event to encourage people to come along to the seminar. I'm not going to cover everything in detail as much as I did when I did the Dern Brown uh, Trends of Thought Analysis. What I'm going to do in this video is to show you some of the NLP related things that Tony's using and explaining some of the concepts that are going on in terms of how he's seeding beliefs, how he's anchoring and also how he's chaining uh, ideas together. I'm not here tonight to teach positive attitude, I gotta tell you that, because I don't believe in positive thinking. I do not believe you should go to your garden and say, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds. Now, I'm positive. Now, first thing here we're going to cover quickly. Tony starts off from a place of uh, setting this frame, so to speak, as we say in NLP, that he doesn't believe in positive thinking. And he equates positive thinking, in this case, to a certain degree, to be denying what is there, in this case saying that there's any weeds in your garden. When Tony's going, there's no weeds in my garden, etc., and he's spinning his ha hands around like that when he was, that is uh, beginning the process as he was saying that, and people were laughing, and as he changed his voice tone of auditory and visually anchoring specifically that state and also getting people's buy-in on what he's about to say next. Bullshit! There's weeds in there! If you don't pull them out, they're going to take your garden! But here's what I also don't believe. I don't believe in seeing it work. Now, what's interesting, again, you're going to see Tony doing, I'm going to highlight just uh, some of the visual anchoring that Tony is using, particularly around Extraordinary Life. Uh, that uh, he is about to do shortly and also how he's using that when he's communicating other things that he's having people buy into. Worse than it is. Cause that's now automatically he's saying here, I don't want you to see it, uh, think of it as worse than it is. And uh, by using the, the, the open hand and the left arm in this case, he's anchoring a particular thought, uh, in this case an association of not seeing something worse than it is. And in, he's, begin, he's going to begin talking about an extraordinary life in a moment, and you're going to see that left expression is going to become very important. What people do is say, oh, I'm skeptical. You know, I'm pessimistic about this. What they're really saying is I'm scared. I'm afraid to get my hopes up. I'm afraid to try because I might fail. I might, I'm afraid to do something. I might look bad. I'm afraid to you know, believe in something, and what if it doesn't work? Or what if I look naive? You are going to be disappointed in life, guaranteed. Tony's highlighting here in terms of, uh, he's speaking first, like all great leaders, to a truth, which is common in society in terms of people are going to be scared about trying out different things, they're going to be afraid to go for things, uh, you know, in many senses a lot of people who are already dead, in terms of they've already given up on aspirations and goals, not that they're not capable of achieving them or that they don't have the resources or could find the resources, but more that they uh, deny themselves permission to even consider going after them. As Tony's explained on this, what he's really, uh, what he frames it all as is, okay, first, yeah, you're saying you're pessimistic and you don't believe, and then what that really means is you're s scared and afraid, and what that's really all about is of being disappointed, and that in actuality you're going to be disappointed in your life regardless. Now, what's interesting is how Tony is going to reframe that disappointment in a moment. Many times, that's part of the test. If you don't do anything, you won't be disappointed. You'll know how life will be, and your life will be boring. But we have... So in this case, Tony's reframed that whole idea in case of not going for something, being scared and afraid, and being disappointed to actually mean it's actually part of a greater test. And, and then goes along to equate that if you don't do anything, then you know how your life's going to turn out, which is boring. So in this case, uh, Tony's already set the seeds earlier about if you leave the weeds in your garden, they're going to take your garden. And then he's talking about talking to the experience of people being afraid and scared of trying stuff, but dressing up as being pessimistic. And really talking about that uh, regardless of what happens in your life, you're going to face disappointment. And if you don't do anything, then your life is going to be boring. So this is the first key thing that Tony's setting up in this presentation. To be able to position our lives to have an extraordinary life, you have to do one thing. We've got to see it as it is. 
And we've got to be honest with ourselves not see it worse than it is. Then we've got to see it better than it is, which is how we want it, right? Because without a vision, people perish. There's a good book that said that, called The Good Book. And then third... In this case, Tony's talking about it, beginning to set the seeds for what he wants people to be able to do. In this case, who's going to deny not wanting an extraordinary life? You can see from a communication point of view, Tony moves around the stage quite a lot. He's engaging the audience in terms of his eye expressions, his facial expressions. As a presenter, Tony's very playful. He goes very much into the states and gives the audience permission to go there, as you're going to see shortly. The piece is we got to make it that way. To do that, we must make... In this case, saying again, Tony's holding everything about an extraordinary life in this general space, as in right front and center. And he just did a hand expression of make it that way. Again, anchoring in this case the phrase make it that way with the forward expression of the hand, or also you would see him in a little while anchor and with a particular hand signal coming out from his forehead. So let's just see what he does. Manage one thing, our psychology. A psychology allows you to figure out how to make use of anything. Tony, how do you Again, here is really simplifying, in this case, psychology. And Tony's very good at simplifying thing, concepts down to what you need. In this case, Tony's equating psychology to emotion, which obviously is a, is a very big part of it. Um, but in saying that, he's making it more accessible to the audience. And also, will later go into communicating that there are tools and give people a, a convincer, an experience of them changing their own emotions. Uh, and when they have that, they'll be also more... Um, believing in what Tony's communicating and expressing. You develop that psychology. We're going to find that psychology is a big word for emotion. Because your psychology can be defined by the feelings you experience on a consistent basis. And just notice in this case he's using that specific hand expression again of holding his hand closed so to speak and going on about emotions and feeling and you're going to see later on when he's referring to emotions and feeling he's going to use that hand expression again. Basis. If you have a lot of frustration in your life, a lot of anger, a lot of sadness, a lot of worry, I know your life sucks. I don't care what you say about it, it sucks. Not that it isn't a great life compared to other people, because we can always find other people to compare ourselves and feel good about ourselves. That's why Jerry Springer has a show. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so before we get into the next section, Tony here again is setting a lot of frames. In that first section so far, he's led you into a... Um, a certain set of seeded certain set of ideas but the high level frame is an extraordinary life is created by an extraordinary psychology psychology is emotion and also uh, at the beginning when he was speaking about pessimism and being scared and afraid he was creating at the beginning of an, a propulsion system as we know in NLP which is something that you want to get a person moving away from at the same time that they're moving towards. So what exactly are people moving away from so far, even though it's done quite gently? In this case, it's about being scared, being afraid of having a life of, of basically boredom um, and not doing anything and uh, beginning to engage them into this idea that you can have an extraordinary life by having an extraordinary psychology and by influencing your emotions. Where do they find these people? <laughs> All right. So in the next section, he's gonna start talking about, in this case, what it actually means, what are the possibilities, and how he frames it automatically is that it's fun to be free. It's fun to be free. It's fun to get rid of all the bullshit that keeps you from being able to live your life at the fullest level, and here's the bullshit. Now, before we get into what the bullshit is, as Tony's describing here, what's implied is it's fun to be free and it's fun to get rid of all the shit in your life, is that this person on stage, in this case Tony, is able to help you do that, and obviously later on he's going to get into a sales pitch in terms of to attend the event um, and in, in, in fact actually all of this is a sales pitch but that said um, in this case in addition to communicating and sharing and engaging people he's implying that in order uh, that in order for you to be able to create the um, extraordinary psychology you want what you're really talking about is getting freedom and and he's going to define that in a broader term uh, rather than just saying it's a localized term, he's going to reframe that as a cultural challenge. And it's not an Australian challenge, it's not an American challenge, it's not a Taiwanese challenge, it's a cultural challenge. Most of us have been conditioned to be average. Because to step out means pain. And it's very true in your culture. You know it as well as I do. Your culture has names for this shit. But you know what? It's worth it.